Good morning. Today, I want to share some advice with you I recently gave to the entrepreneurism students at Francis Tuttle Votech here in Oklahoma City. I had a discussion with a bright group of young people that are looking to go into business for themselves, specifically about podcasting, about the how and the why and the techniques behind a good podcast. So I'm going to give you an abbreviated version of that on this podcast today. It's a little bit meta, but I hope you dig it. So here we go. It's Saturday. I'm in the office. You know what that means, the Saturday Morning Hustle Podcast. No hyperbolic hustle culture, just brutally honest, straightforward business advice and motivation every Saturday for entrepreneurs, business owners, or anyone pursuing success. You can't just work nine to five Monday through Friday and hope to become the next big thing. You gotta work smart, work hard, put in extra effort while everyone else is sleeping, playing games, or wasting time. Maximize bonus time to get more work done. This podcast is for anyone willing to come in early, stay late, hustle on the weekend to be truly great. That's right. I recently talked to the entrepreneurism class at Francis Tuttle, a group of high school students, bright young minds who are interested in entrepreneurism. And they asked me specifically to come and talk about podcasting because they're starting their part first podcast. So I'm going to give you the five, six points that are relative to the Saturday Morning Hustle because there's a lot of conversation that was specific to them and what they're doing with their podcast. I'm going to give you guys some top tips. And this doesn't just apply to podcasts. This can apply to any communication device, any marketing device, anything that you're producing that represents you, represents your brand, tells your brand story, is a communication vehicle for yourself as a person, for your business, for an organization you're a part of, for a cause that you believe in, you can apply these same principles as well. I've discussed these a few times on the podcast before, but I'm going to sum them up very quickly and succinctly for you today on the Saturday Morning Hustle. So here we go. First, of course, you have to start with knowing your why and knowing your audience. You have to understand why you wanted to start this podcast. I started the Saturday Morning Hustle because I wanted to do a better job of communicating with people, connecting with people, giving them information, providing value than I was doing previously, which was the Saturday Morning Hustle social media post. So I was making social media posts originally kind of tongue in cheek, a little bit fun. Then I started taking it more serious as people started responding to the social media post. And then we started doing, of course, the short five minute podcast episodes on anchor and then it progressed into longer versions and then the video channel and now everything that comes with the Saturday morning hustle but knowing your why why are you doing it don't make a podcast don't make a video don't make an ad don't host an event just because understand what it is you want to do with it who you're trying to reach and who you're trying to influence and the value you can provide for them the second half of that conversation is knowing your audience Everyone is not your audience. And I know it's really tempting when we talk about podcasts or videos or something that is entertaining or something that is a digital format where it can go out to anyone in the world at any time. But setting, designating your audience as everyone is just too broad. You can't cover all the topics. You can't be interesting to everyone. There isn't a person There isn't a brand in the world that is interesting and likable to everyone on the planet. You shouldn't try that. And one of the worst things you can do in business is trying to make everyone your customer. Trying to make your product or service fit everyone is impossible. And the pursuit of everyone will bankrupt you. And in this case, we're talking about podcasting. It's just simply creating too much inconsistency in the type of programming you do, the type of content who you're being attractive to, who you're repelling, etc. Because you take a stand on certain issues, because you have certain opinions, because your personal style, etc., etc. So you can't have everyone as your client. So designate who your audience is. Who are you talking to? Who's the listener of your podcast? Who's the purchaser of your purchaser of your products or services? Who's going to be engaging you in this process? So know why you're doing it and Cash and fame is not a why. I want to make a lot of money. I want to be famous. I want to be cool. These are not good reasons to do things, especially something you need to put a lot of effort into. 
podcasting looks easy and it's accessible. Your podcast can be as simple as a free app on your smartphone or as complex as the studio and the microphone and the camera I have set up here. But no matter what it is, you still have to put effort into it. You have got to do promotions, etc. So you're going to put some effort in. So make sure you understand why you're doing it, understand who you're doing it for, and understand your value proposition. What value are you creating for them? Now, it can be entertaining. It can be a distraction from the chaos of life. That is a value proposition, but it also can be educational, enlightening, informative, maybe challenging traditional thought processes and giving people a new way to think of things or look at things, or just simply getting people to think about certain subjects. Those are value propositions as well. If you're trying to be everything to everyone, you will try to not offend anyone or turn anyone off or say anything, something that other people may not just really completely agree with you with, which then means you will not be interesting and you will not really be providing value. Challenging your audience, challenging listeners, getting them to get outside of their comfort zone, even if it's just barely, even if it's a slight disagreement with you, is actually good. It's engaging. The listeners will enjoy that. They want that. So understand who you are, understand the value proposition, understand why you started your podcast, and understand who should be and could be listening to it and getting the value from it. That's the starting place. Know your why, know your audience. Second tip, be prepared. If you're doing a podcast by yourself, you still need to be prepared. There was a lot of work to get this shot for the video camera. There's a lot of work to make sure that this audio is as clean and as well produced as possible when it comes for the audio version. There'll be notes, show notes. They'll be making sure that the distribution channels are working. There's a lot of preparation that goes into just doing a podcast by yourself. If you're doing a podcast with guests, you want to value their time. You value their time by being prepared. Have your camera set up, have your microphone set up, have your lights set up. Have the room quiet. Make sure you're in a place that will work. Make sure you have a setup that is, is in perfect working order. Make sure your batteries are charged. Make sure your cards are in the, your data cards are in the recorder, etc. Be prepared. Value other people's time, whether it's your time or other people participating in your podcast. It's one of the biggest turnoffs as a professional podcaster when I'm a guest on other people's podcast. This is a question specifically that the students really wanted to know about is what do I look for when I'm a guest? What do I like and appreciate and what I dislike and what's a turnoff when I am a guest on a podcast as a professional podcaster? And the number one turnoff is lack of preparation or lack of taking my time serious and being prepared so that they utilize the time that I have with them because I'm giving it up away from my business to be a, a part of their podcast. Typically, it's typically not something where they're paying me to be there. Even if they're paying me to be there, they still need to value my time. That comes from preparation. At the same time, the shows I love doing, the people I love working with, the people that I would give high recommendations to and try to help them in other ways outside of their podcast are the people that are prepared and that value my time with them. So it's never a bad thing to be prepared. Make your notes. Have your bullet points. You want to. You don't necessarily have to script your entire podcast out, but you do need to know what you're talking about, the subjects you want to cover. You do have a time frame in mind that you want to hit. You want to be consistent in that process, and that comes from preparation. We'll talk a little bit more about consistency later. The next thing that you really need to consider, very, very important, if you want your podcast to be successful, is that your podcast needs to be authentic. You need to speak an authentic voice. You need to be prepared with those notes and ideas of what you want to talk about, but then speak off, off the top of your mind uh, something you would say to something, someone in the room with you. If they were your friend, if they were a coworker, if they were someone who hired you for whatever type of business expertise you have, what would you say to them in the room in a professional situation is what you should say on your podcast. So you should have an idea of what you want to talk about, bullet points of subjects, but then the command of the subject. And if you could talk about it authentically, you can make a podcast about it. If you don't know what you're talking about, you shouldn't make a podcast about it. You do not hear me on the Saturday Morning Hustle talk about chemistry or aerodynamics or zoology. I don't know anything about those things. I do know marketing, business development, strategy, social media, podcast production. I know all these things because this is what I do professionally. I do it on a regular basis. I have a good command of it. I could talk to anyone in a room. 
face-to-face or a group of 50 or a group of 5,000 or a TED Talk or on this podcast about subject matter like that. I cannot talk about everything in the world. The things I know a little bit about, mechanics, pretty decent with mechanics, but it's not something I do professionally. Sports, I'm a big fan of, of certain sports teams and certain sports but I don't know everything the same way sports casters and sports podcasters do. So I like those things. I'm engaged in those things. If I was going to podcast about them, I would need to do research. I would need to be prepared, maybe putting some definitions together, understanding the rules, understanding how things work, et cetera. So authentic communication about something you know about and have passion for goes back to knowing your why. If the why for your podcast is, something you have passion for. Communication is a passion of mine. It's what I do for a living. It's what I've done for the majority of my life is trying to be a good communicator and now helping you be a better communicator. I have passion for that, which means after you do 300 and 400 episodes of your podcast, you still have the drive to do it every day. Every week, every Saturday, I make a podcast episode for you. Occasionally, I share some flashback episodes like recently when I was on vacation. But even that takes preparation and it takes work and it takes passion and a willingness to not give up and not skip and not half-ass and not take anything for, for granted from the listeners and from your audience because you really want them to get it. You really want them to understand it. You really want them to learn from you and get value from you because you have passion about the subjects you're talking about. That passion and preparation, and only talking about things that you really know about and care about, all comes out as an authentic conversation. Authentic. Speak about the things you know. Do not try to make yourself sound much smarter, much more educated, much more worldly than you are. Think about it. When people talk to you face-to-face, and if they start saying things you think are just pompous and something just to impress you, it's a turnoff. You're not really excited about having a conversation with them. It's the same thing in a podcast. If someone hears your podcast and they feel like you're just saying things, using big words and big terms and big ideas that you really don't know anything about, just to impress them, they will be turned off by it. They won't listen anymore. The second half of this tip, authentic conversations. Be conversational. Now, this podcast is just me, so there's no back and forth. But a lot of times I do try to talk to you. I look right into the camera. I lean right into the microphone and I say, do you agree with me? Do you believe that? Do you have input? I ask for your input on every episode through social media and and however you found this podcast, please give me information, feedback, whether it's a tweet, a Facebook post, a comment on LinkedIn, LinkedIn, a review of the podcast, whatever it is, I'm looking for that conversation. And so I try to talk to you through this microphone and through this camera the same way I would if you were standing in the room with me. That makes it an authentic conversation conversation. It's conversational. It's something people can and will want to listen to because it's not a commercial. It's not a produced piece of content. Those are fine. But if I need to learn something like from a college class, I'll listen to a dissertation or a lecture from a college professor. If I need to learn how to fix something in my house, I'll watch a YouTube video of a mechanic or a repair person actually doing that work, which I've done recently. <laughs> Just a random side note there. But if I want to learn something new on a subject like communication, like marketing, like running a business, then I would have a conversation with someone who does those things. And that's what this podcast is, is an opportunity for me to have a conversation with more people than I could in person because of thanks to the internet and our smartphone technology and all those things. So authentic conversations. Next tip, be consistent, but pleasant surprises. You heard me say consistency earlier. The Saturday morning hustle means it needs to happen every Saturday in the morning. I make great strides and I have a great system in place to get these podcasts to you every Saturday morning. Unfortunately, there's some platforms that take a really long time to get the podcast updated and it's not Saturday afternoon or maybe sometimes Saturday evening or even Sunday before they update, but it's out of my control. Consistent. I haven't missed a week. One week I've missed in seven years and that week was a technical issue. 
there was another week I missed because I was having a surgery and I was in the hospital. I tried to make it up later in that week. That's consistency. Consistency is how you build audience. Consistency allows people, again, to feel valued in the conversation, look forward to your content, know it's coming, be excited about it, tell their friends about it, listen to it, engage with you if it's conversational, maybe they'll make a comment, leave a review, tell a friend, etc. That comes from consistency. Consistency, preparation, authenticity, these all go together. You see the theme that we have here going, right? But people do love pleasant surprises. People do like it when you're consistent, but give them something extra, some bonus, something better than they expected. So set expectations. It's a Saturday morning hustle. It's going to happen every Saturday morning. And then meet those expectations as the minimum. And then go above and beyond. Give them more. Give you bonus episodes. Give you flashback episodes. I give you opportunities to communicate with me. Tell me topics you want me to, to talk about in the future. We did a whole 24 24 part series called the balance series it last two years on the last monday of every month why was that different because it was extra it was bonus i went above and beyond the expectation and i wanted to do some different have some different conversations with you on the podcast i, I love that series go check it out there's playlist out there there's links on youtube and on the social media saturday morning hustle.com as well so be consistent with pleasant surprises meet that minimum the expectation you've set First day of the month, first Monday, the third Wednesday, every Saturday, whatever your cadence is, whatever timing you need it to be for your podcast, for your social media posts, for your advertising, whatever your communication needs to be, be consistent. Don't do it one time and let it go. Don't do it randomly because people then can't make that a part of their life. And without making it part of their life, they can't be fans and they can't become really, really embrace your communication is something they look forward to and want to engage in because that is what you want out of your audience be consistent with pleasant surprises meet and beat those expectations that is how you build audience and loyalty and that's how you create success for your podcast for your video show for social media influencing for all for your website all of those things now podcast specific here People do not listen to podcasts to hear commercials or infomercials or lectures, etc. Do not sell on your podcast. Now, I say that as a person who I talk about things I do professionally. The things that you hear on the Starting One Hustle are things you can hire me for through the Golden Group. And I mention my business and I mention my business podcast and I mention my business website on this, on this podcast. But I'm not here telling you... Uh, in any time, hire me. Or for $14.95, I'll do this for you. Or we could save you 30% on your income taxes. You know, None of those things that you would hear in a commercial. Because people don't like commercials. Think about it. You don't want to hear ads. You got the pre-roll ads on YouTube. You got TV ads, of course, that break up your favorite programs. You don't want to hear a commercial. Now, we need to be advertised to. We need marketing because we need to buy things. We need to know about things and we need to be involved in things. And that's all good. It's all communication at the end of the day. But don't be a salesperson. Don't be salesy on your podcast because it's a turnoff. People don't want to hear a 30-minute infomercial. That's why they play infomercials at 2 o'clock in the morning. No one really wants to see those things. No one wants to hear those things. It goes back to the value proposition, to authenticity, to understanding your audience and giving them something, what they expect and better. All of that comes from not selling them anything, not being pretentious or giving them some sort of extra polished image of you. That's authenticity. We've already talked about that. But instead, being conversational about things you know about that are beneficial, helpful to them, whether it's they need to learn something, they want to entertain it, they need whatever it is, as long as there's value created. So if you do those things, then people will get to know you, maybe get to like you, maybe recommend you, maybe they'll hire you or they'll do business with you or they'll see you in the community and just say, hey, let's be friends. Maybe I'll buy you a drink, whatever it is. As long as you don't sell them anything, as long as you don't look in the camera and, and get right on this microphone and say, you know, I'm, I, I'm an accountant and you need to hire my firm and here's what we'll do for X number of dollars. Ugh. No one wants to hear that. 
No one wants to hear, you know, the used car salesman, right? Come on down, get you in a brand new car. And you're going to love this. And what's it going to take today? And if you've got $6,000, we can make a deal. Like, no one wants to hear that. So present your expertise, present your insights, present your personality, be authentic, communicate, value delivery. And then someone will get to know you enough, understand you enough to utilize products or services that you endorse or that that are part of your business. They will sponsor your podcast. They will buy things from your advertisers. They will support you on social media. They will give you shout outs. They'll invite you onto their podcast, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's all kinds of opportunities that come from a podcast if you don't sell a thing and instead have authentic conversations for the audience that's intended with a value proposition consistently and authentically, right? That is how you build audience. That is how you create value. That's how you utilize podcast or any other type of communication or marketing tool. That's it right there, summed up exactly. Bonus point right here. Here's the bonus point that I'm going to let you get back to your Saturday. Sharing is caring. If you like a, bo- a podcast, share it on social media. Share it however, in whatever way you found it. Make a comment, leave a review, do all those things. If you're a guest on a podcast, if someone asks you to be on their podcast, whether it's your first podcast ever or you do 10,000 podcasts on a regular basis, sharing that experience, letting people know you're on the podcast, telling people about their program, not just your episode, but their program in general, is a good way to show appreciation for someone who wanted you to have in a conversation with you, who featured you on the thing they put so much effort and work in. So be a good guest, be a good host, be a good listener, be a good part of the community that are built around these things and share, tell people about it. It's, it's not something to hide. Don't gatekeep it. If you found a great podcast, tell your friends. Because then they can hear the great podcast and you have something to talk about and the podcast will continue because our numbers go up. Maybe their advertising does well. All the things that come with it. If you want more of it, you've got to tell people about it. Sharing is caring. That's your bonus point. So those were some of the things you could take away from the conversation I had earlier this week with the very smart high school students who are in the entrepreneurism program at Francis Tuttle, our local workforce development slash education slash Votech system here in Oklahoma City. So I hope you dug it. As usual, leave a comment, leave a review, reach out on me on social media. Let me know what you think. Let's be conversational about it. And I'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Subscribe so you never miss an episode. Leave a comment, leave a review, share with a friend. I would really appreciate that. Follow and engage on social media, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and this Saturday Morning Hustle Facebook fan page. All the information, all the past episodes, all the Saturday Morning Hustle entrepreneurial and coffee and donut swag is at SaturdayMorningHustle.com. See you next week.